Uh, welcome to this uh, course on uh, Python for Data Science. Uh, this is a four week course where we are going to teach you uh, some very basic uh, programming aspects in Python. Uh, and since this is a course uh, that is geared towards uh, data science, uh, towards end, end of the course, uh, based on what has been taught in the course, uh, we will also show you two different case studies. Uh, one uh, is what we call as a function approximation case study, another one a classification case study, and then tell you how to solve those case studies using the programming platform that you have learned. So in this first uh, introductory lecture, I'm just going to talk about why uh, uh, are we looking at Python uh, for data science. Um, so uh, to look at that first, we are going to look at what data science is. This is something that uh, you would have seen in uh, other videos of uh, uh, courses in NPTEL and other places. Um, data science is basically the science of uh, analyzing raw data and deriving insights from this data. And you could use multiple techniques to derive insights. You could use simple statistical uh, techniques to derive insights. You could uh, use more uh, complicated and more sophisticated machine learning techniques to derive insights and so on. Nonetheless, uh, the key focus of data science is in actually deriving these insights using whatever techniques that you want to use. Now, there's a lot of excitement about data science and this excitement comes because it's been shown that you can get very valuable insights from large data and you can get insights about how uh, different variables change together, how one variable affects another variable and so on with large data which is not very easy to simply see by very simple computation. So you need to invest some time and energy into understanding how you could look at this data and derive these insights from data. Um, and from a utilitarian viewpoint, if you look at data science in industries, uh, if you do proper data science, it allows these industries to make better decisions. Uh, these decisions could be um, in multiple fields. For example, companies could make better purchasing decisions, better hiring decisions, uh, better decisions in terms of how to operate their processes and so on. So when we talk about decisions, the decisions could be across multiple verticals in an industry. And data science is not only useful from an industrial perspective, it is also useful in actual sciences themselves. So where you look at lots of data to model your system or test your hypotheses or theories about systems and so on. Uh, so when we talk about data science, uh, we start by assuming uh, that we have a large amount of data for the problem of interest. And we are going to basically look at this data. We are going to inspect the data. Uh, we are going to clean uh, and curate the data. Then we will do some transformation of the data, modeling and so on before we can derive insights that are valuable uh, to the organization or to test a theory and so on. Now coming to a more practical viewpoint of uh, what we do uh, once we have data. Uh, I have these four bullet points which roughly tell you uh, supposing you were uh, solving a data science problem, uh, what are the steps you will do? So you will start with just having uh, data, someone gives you data and you are trying to derive insights from this data. So the very first step is really to bring this data into your system. So you have to read the data so that the data comes into this programming platform so that you can use this data. Now, data could be in multiple uh, formats. So you could have data in a simple Excel sheet or some other format. So we will teach you how to pull data in uh, to your programming platform from multiple data formats. So that's the first step really. If you think about how you're going to solve a problem, the steps would be first to simply read the data. And then once you read the data, many times you have to do some processing with this data. You could have uh, data uh, that, that is not correct. Uh, for example, we all know uh, that uh, if you have your mobile numbers, there are 10 numbers in a mobile number. And if there is a column of mobile numbers and then say there is a 
uh, one row where there are just five numbers, then you know there is something wrong. Okay, so this is a very simple check I am talking about. In real data processing, this gets much more complicated. So once you bring the data in, when you try to process this data, uh, you are going to get errors such as this. So how do you uh, remove such errors? How do you clean the data? Is one activity that, that usually precedes uh, doing you more useful stuff with the data. This is not the only uh, issue that we look at. Uh, there could be data that is missing. So for example, uh, there is a variable for which you get a value in multiple situations, but in some situations the value is missing. So what do you do with this data? Do you throw the record away? or you do something to fill the data and so on. So these are all data processing cleaning steps. So in this course, we will tell you the tools that are available in Python so that you can do this data processing cleaning and so on. Now what you have done at this point is you have been able to get the data into the system. You have been able to process and clean the data and get to a certain data file or data structure that is reasonably complete so that you think you can work with this data set. At which point what you will do is you will try to summarize this data and usually summarization of this data, very simple technique would be uh, very, very simple statistical um, measures that you will compute. You could for example compute a median, uh, mode, mean of a particular column. Okay, so those are simple ideas of summarizing the data you could compute variance and so on. So we are going to teach you how to use this notions of statistical um, quantities that you can use to summarize the data. Once you summarize the data, then another activity which is usually taken up is what is called visualization, right? So visualization means you look at this data and more pictorially to get insights about the data before you bring in heavy duty algorithms to bear on this data. And this is a creative aspect of data science. Uh, the same data could be visualized by multiple people in multiple ways and some visualizations are not only eye catching but are also much more informative than other types of visualization. So this notion of plotting this data so that um, some of the uh, attributes or aspects of the data are made apparent uh, is this notion of visualization. And there are tools in Python that will teach you uh, in terms of how you visualize this data. So at this point, you have taken the data, you have cleaned the data, got a set of data points or uh, data structure that you can work with. You have done some basic summary of this data that gives you some insights. You have also looked at it more visually and you have got some more insights. But when you have large amount of data, big data, the last step is really deriving those insights which are not readily apparent either through visualization or through simple summary of data. So how do we then go and look at more sophisticated analytics or analysis of data so that these insights come out? And that's where machine learning comes. And as a part of this course, when you see the progress of this course, you will notice that you will go through all of this so that you are ready to look at data science problems in a structured format and then use Python as a tool to solve some of these problems. Now, why Python for uh, doing all of this? Uh, the number one uh, reason is that there are these Python libraries which already are geared towards doing many of the things that we talked about uh, so that it becomes easy for one to program and very quickly you can get some uh, interesting uh, uh, outcomes out of whatever you are trying to do. So there are, uh, as we talked about in the previous slide, you need to do data manipulation and pre-processing. There are lots of um, uh, functions libraries in uh, Python where you can do uh, data wrangling, manipulation and so on. Um, from a data summary viewpoint, there are uh, uh, many of these statistical uh, calculations that you want to do are already pre-programmed and you have to simply invoke them with your data to be able to show data summary. 
the next step we talked about visualization there are libraries uh, in uh, python which can be used to do the visualization uh, and finally uh, for the more sophisticated analysis that we talked about um, all kinds of machine learning algorithms are already pre-coded available as uh, libraries in python so again once you understand uh, some some bit about these functions and once you get comfortable working in python then applying certain machine learning algorithms for these problems become trivial. You simply call these libraries and then uh, run these algorithms. At a higher level, so in the previous slide we, we talked about um, a, a flow process for how I get the data in, clean it and all the way up to insights and then parallelly we said why uh, Python makes it easy for us to do all of this. Um, if, you, if you go back, uh, if you go forward uh, a little more and then uh, ask uh, in terms of uh, the other advantages of Python uh, which are little more than just very simple uh, data science activities. Uh, Python provides you uh, several uh, libraries and, and it is being continuously uh, improved. So, anytime there is a new algorithm, um, those are uh, uh, coming into the set of libraries. So, in that sense, it is very uh, varied and there is also a good uh, user community. Uh, so, if there are some issues with new libraries and so on, uh, those are fixed so that you get uh, uh, robust library to work with and we talk about data and data can be of different scales. So, uh, the examples that you will see in this course are data of uh, reasonably small size, but in real life problems you are going to look at data which is much larger which we call as big data. So, Python has uh, uh, an ability to integrate with big data frameworks like Hadoop, Spark and so on. And Python also allows you to do more sophisticated programming, uh, object oriented programming and uh, functional programming. Um, Python with all of this uh, sophisticated uh, tools and abilities is still a reasonably uh, simple language to learn, it is reasonably fast to prototype and it also gives you the ability to work with data which is in your local machine or uh, in a cloud and so on. So, these are all things that one looks for when um, one looks at a programming platform uh, which is capable of solving uh, problems uh, in, in, in real life, right. So, these are real problems that you can solve. These are not only toy examples, but uh, real uh, applications that you can build, data science applications that you can build with Python. And um, just uh, as uh, another pointer in terms of why uh, I, we believe that Python uh, is something that a uh, lot of our uh, students and professionals in India should learn. Uh, as you know, uh, there are tools which are paid tools for uh, machine learning with all of these libraries and so on. And there are also open source tools. And in India, uh, based on a survey, um, most uh, people, uh, of course, uh, prefer open source tools uh, for a variety of reasons, cost being one uh, because it is free to use, uh, but also if it is just free to use, but it does not have a robust user community, then it is not really very useful. That is where Python really scores in terms of a robust user community, uh, which can help uh, with people working in Python. So, it is both uh, open source and there is a robust user community. Uh, both of which are advantages for uh, Python. And if you think of um, other competing uh, languages for machine learning, if you look at this chart in India, uh, about 44% uh, of the people who were surveyed said uh, uh, they use Python or they prefer Python. And of course, a close second is R. In fact, R was much more preferred a few years back, but uh, over the last few years uh, in India, uh, Python is uh, starting to become uh, the programming platform of choice. So, in that sense, um, it is a good language to learn because the opportunities uh, for jobs and so on are a uh, lot more when, when you are comfortable with uh, Python as a language. 
So, with this I will stop uh, this brief introduction on why uh, Python for data science. I hope uh, I have given you an idea of uh, the fact that uh, while we are going to teach you Python as a programming language, uh, please keep in mind that uh, each module that we teach uh, in this is actually ge geared towards data science. So, uh, as we teach Python we will make the connections to how you will use some of the things that you are seeing in data science and all of this will culminate uh, with these two case studies uh, that will bring all of these ideas together uh, in terms of uh, both giving you an idea and an understanding of how a data science problem will be solved and also how it will be solved in Python which is the program of choice uh, currently in India. So, I hope um, this uh, short four week course uh, helps you quickly get on uh, to this uh, programming platform and then learn uh, data science and then you can enhance your skills uh, with much more uh, detailed understanding of both the programming language and data science techniques. Thank you.